I'm Bambi Francisco, and I'm speaking with Richard Rosenblatt, and we're here at the Demand Studios headquarters in San Francisco. Actually, we're at the Web 2.0 Summit. <laughs> and you can hear the ambient noise here because we're in the Demand Studios hotel room. Richard, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Bambi. Now, you set out to turn traditional media on its head back in 2006 when you started Demand Studios. It's three and a half years later. How have you redefined media? Well, thank you for that. We actually didn't set out to turn on its head. We set out to, to create a uh, whole new form of content. Mm -hmm. It may or may not turn tra traditional media on its head. We definitely think that uh, it's causing people in traditional media to rethink their business models. But um, I think that's why is what we did was we added a science to the art of creating content. Mm -hmm. so, th so the idea for forever was let's make a piece of content and we'll see if it works. Mm -hmm. What we're doing instead is we're using you know search, social media, and direct navigation. People typing directly in what they want mm -hmm. to figure out what type of people, what type of content people want, mm -hmm. match it with advertisements, and then only make the content that people want that's profitable, right? And that's different. And we're doing it for the mm -hmm. whole commercial long tail. Mm -hmm. So imagine going from big, huge budgets of content, which no one knows if they're going to work, mm -hmm. to small micro pieces the content that we with a surety can tell through all the science and algorithms is going to be successful. I want to talk about how you're applying that science. Well, let's talk about that. So sure. your model in the science is really traditional media is top down, expensively produced right. content. One destination site, yours is pump out a lot of low budget, high quality content, automate the, the process. And uh, a lot of this is evergreen content as well, correct? Right. Absolutely. And just pump that out thousands a month and distribute that across the web. That's Four to five thousand a day. Forty-five thousand. Stand corrected. Forty-five thousand a day in an automated pro fashion, with freelancers paying right. them about fifteen to twenty bucks a story. That's so that, the content. Model. That was great. Yeah, you, you've got it almost exactly right. Just a couple clarifications. Um, the part that's automated is the way in which we decide titles, right? Mm -hmm. So we figure out what people are looking for, mm -hmm. and we create that type of content. So we know if someone is diabetic, they're looking for foods they can eat as a diabetic. Mm -hmm. We know that people are looking for how to make homemade detergent because their kids are allergic to regular detergent. So actually, very important things to the people that have those issues or those questions. Well, the whole idea is that's automated, but after that, it becomes a real people type of process. And in fact, most people don't know this, but over at least 11 people doing 15 different roles from titling to writing to copy editing to fact checking to editorial to, to rating to reviewing Touch one piece of content every piece of content so That's more than the Wall Street Journal touches content Rupert Murdoch said in the old days it was eight to nine Did he? editors yeah now you're cutting that down to one person one editor and then you pump it out right that's that doesn't you don't seem to be making it more efficient if you're adding that many people to one piece of content well you know what's great is we are because we've created an ecosystem where every job is done to its smallest part right so mm -hmm. we think the whole process of, of creating content is way too complex and there's too many people involved in too many different pieces of it. Mm -hmm. So we've taken every part of it from the way in which we select a title to the right qualified writer to the right copy editor who also does the fact checking to the right copy chief mm -hmm. to the community around them and we've right. made it extremely efficient by everybody just doing what they're great at in using technology. The problem before was there wasn't technology so you had too many people touching it and there was no real way of them to collaborate. What's the, I mean, the one way you can get writers to write for you is if they get exposure. Right. So how do you get exposure for, for them is the, is the primary um, driver of traffic Google? Or you, where, where's the traffic coming from? So, so I think there's three reasons why people write. Exactly what you said. Fame, mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. and education to increase their trade, to get better at what they do. So on the part you're referring to, they go on one of our main properties. eHow, 50 million unique visitors a month. Live strong, you know, five to six million unique visitors a month. Our whole network gets 80 million a month. So they're getting the traffic from being on our properties. Now, we, we have started to distribute some of our content into traditional media, like Atlanta Journal Constitution and a few other of those type of papers. Mm -hmm. So they may also, if there's some of our top writers, be seen online as well as offline. So the Google shelf space is actually a small percentage of, I mean, for eHow, it's, you know, how to bake bread or how right. to cook a chicken, basically, land on. You, found, you find eHow through Google. Right, so, so the way w where they're published is on one of our websites, right? I mean, still the majority of people find stuff through search. We mm -hmm. believe that's changing. So, so a lot what of percentage of your traffic comes from Google? It really depends. It's property by, by property, okay. but it's an important component. It's the same percentage as everybody gets from search. Sure. 
So big. it's big, right? Search mm -hmm. is a very important part of the world. But what's going on, if you notice today, mm -hmm. is people are starting to integrate social media, whether it's mm -hmm. Twitter or Facebook or MySpace. Mm -hmm. So we're very focused on making sure that we also get a proportionate share mm -hmm. of our traffic from the new mediums, the new social media ability to send content around. And what percentage of the content is now going to sort of um, corporations through Pluck? Now you have an entry into in corporations. So is that it? Are, are they starting to distribute your you know content? What? So, so the plan on buying Pluck originally was to continue to improve the social media tools to make them even more, you know, Web 2.0-ish, to use an overused term. Mm -hmm. We've done that. We've rolled out Pluck 4. During that, we started talking to a number of our big partners about adding content to an offering which already includes social media, mm -hmm. and we're starting to roll those partners out. We'll have some announcements in, in the coming months as soon as we you know, feel comfortable talking about it, but you will see some of our traditional Pluck partners who you'd be surprised distributing our content.